this is Gretchen from the Avondale Civic Center Library. Welcome to More to Explore. More to Explore is a program for ages 6 to 12. In More to Explore, we will learn, create, and share. Tune in every week for new activities. Last week's brain teaser answer was tennis shoes because there are 10 S's plus the word shoes. 10 S shoes. Here is this week's position puzzle brain teaser. Be sure to watch next week for the answer. For our sundial project, I got the idea from Ranger Rick, which is a magazine that's been around for a long time. It's been around since I was a kid and probably before that, that has some great science information. I also got information from Yale Scientific and Britannica Kids. So how a sundial works? As the earth rotates, it makes it appear that the sun is moving across the sky and that causes items to make shadows. So a sundial has multiple parts. The plate part is called a dial plate and ours is made of a paper plate, but it can be made of different items like stone um, or brick. The other main part of a sundial is the gnomon, which is the rod which casts a shadow throughout the day. So the gnomon's shadow changes based on the time. It also can vary based on the day. So your sundial is not going to be perfectly accurate every day and it's not always going to match a clock because Obviously, we started out with sundials starting in 3500 BCE, but in 13th century is what it said. We went to clocks when those were invented because they're much more precise and an agreed upon time. And so a sundial is just cool to compare to the actual time to see how the sun is moving across your dial. Today we're going to be making a sundial, so hopefully it'll be sunny outside. I was kind of worried about today because it started off cloudy, but the sun is just coming out. So make sure to pick a day where it's sunny. You're also going to need your paper plate and a pen or pencil to poke a hole through the middle of the plate, as well as the marker that you're going to be writing your numbers around the sundial. So first off, take your paper plate, and then poke a hole right in the center. Okay, the reason why I'm doing that is so my straw will fit. And right now it doesn't quite fit, so I need to make a bigger hole. Okay, now that I have a hole in the middle, I'm going to write the number 12 on the edge of my dial. So I'm just gonna write 12. And then what you're going to do is you need to draw a line from the 12 to the hole in the middle. You can use a ruler if you have that. If you don't, you can use a piece of paper that will help you draw a straight line. So I'm out on the desk right now, so I don't have my ruler with me. So I'm actually going to use my copy of the Rave to make a straight line. So I'm gonna line up the 12 and my hole. Let me make sure you can see this. There we go. And I'm just going to draw a line. I don't have to do that for every hour. I'm just doing that to start off my sundial so that I know where my straw needs to show its shadow. I have put some rocks on there so it might be a good idea if it's a windy day to do so. So I've put my straw in the hole in the middle and then I need to tilt my straw a little bit towards my 12 towards the line and you can see the shadow of the straw is not lining up with the line so what I need to do is I need to turn my plate I'm gonna turn it right now to match up the shadow from the straw with the line that I drew on my plate that goes to the 12 o'clock because I need that to be set up in order for my readings later to line up, okay? So I'm putting rocks on my plate 
So I have a straw in the middle, tilted a little bit towards the 12, and I have my plate rotated so the shadow and the line I drew on my plate match up. That's all I need to do for now, and then I can make a prediction on where I think the number one is going to fall. Based on a clock, I have a guess where the shadow might show up, but I need to see if that is the same on my sundial. So I'm going to guess, I can even pencil in where I think it might show up, but at one o'clock, I will come out here again and then write or draw a line or write my number where one o'clock shows. And then I can do that every hour after that to make my sundial. In this experiment, you are using observation and prediction to see how your sundial will work. It probably won't look exactly like a clock, but after you've recorded for the day, look and compare it. Does it look similar? Are the hours close? See what it looks like. To celebrate Groundhog's Day, I chose the book Groundhog's Dilemma by Kristen Reminar. Once a year, Groundhog reports to his friends if there will be six more weeks of winter or if spring is coming. Some of them love more winter time and others hate it. He can't control the weather, but his friends think that by bringing him presents, he will choose if winter will end. Will Groundhog be able to make all of his friends happy? Find out in Groundhog's Dilemma. If you're looking for a fun way to learn history, try Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. Each book is a graphic novel describing an important event in history, such as the Donner Party, the Underground Railroad, and World War I. In addition to history, the books contain humor in the form of three narrators, Nathan Hale, the Provost, and the Hangman. The series currently contains 10 books. The newest one is about the Louisiana Purchase. Find these in our graphic novel section.